23 Cool Gifts for Science Lovers. First up, this desktop display has captured a lightning-like pattern in the material, called a Lichtenberg fractal. This lightning was captured by trapping a massive high voltage charge in the material and abruptly discharging it as you can see here, and it makes for such a beautiful light up display. You can also capture these patterns using high voltage and an insulating material like wood, which leads me to the next cool gift, which is this wood burn fractal art piece. The branches are absolutely stunning and it definitely levels up your room. Next up is a wind tunnel for your desk. It works great for Hot Wheels and other small cars, and I had three that I tried out. Start by filling up the chamber with fog fluid. That produces the fog that gets pulled through the chamber, and then you use these plastic nozzles to choose whether you want a single stream or five streams. I think five looks the best, and you can adjust the speed with the knob to make the airflow faster. The first car I tested was this Lambo, which is a very streamlined car. The fog flows really smoothly over the car, even at higher speed. Next, this truck, which is definitely a more inefficient shape for drag. There's much more turbulence even at lower speeds, and I actually think that makes it more interesting to see on display. The last one I tried was this food truck, which was very bulky. You of course can test out other small objects that fit and don't roll around, but I think these cars are the best. I kind of wish it came with a few cars, but other than that, it's such a cool desktop device. Next, this is a levitating UFO Bluetooth speaker. It electromagnetically levitates above the base, similar to previous levitation devices I've shown, but instead of a lamp, this one is a Bluetooth speaker. Out of all the levitation devices I've tried, I will say that this one is the most stable and I can easily bounce it or spin it. It looks really cool in the dark and provides a great atmosphere to the room, and you can also take the rechargeable UFO piece to go without the base. Next, this is a classic toy you might have seen at science gift shops called an Airzooka. You can shoot pretty strong donut shaped bursts of air across the room. The faster moving air in the center wraps around the outside to produce the vortices that make the donut look in shape. It's definitely a cool gift as long as you're fine getting blasted in the face over and over again from across the room. Next up, this is a flash paper magic wand. The key here is of course the flash paper which ignites and burns really easy as you can see here. So you take a small 2.5 by 2.5 inch square strip, fold it multiple times and then stuff it into the barrel of the wand. After turning the wand on, you press the button whenever, and about two seconds after pressing, the flash paper will ignite. This gives you time to wave the wand and cast a spell before the flash paper goes flying. It doesn't always burn perfectly, as you can see here, and it depends on how tight you stuff it and if you use the right amount. Sometimes it burns near the barrel, and sometimes it shoots out too violently before fully igniting. As always with anything involving fire, you need to take the proper safety precautions and use adult supervision. Next, this is a Nixie tube clock. Nixie tubes were used to display numbers back in the old day and have different cathode shapes for each number. When you provide power to one cathode, it makes it glow in the mostly neon gas filled bulb. Nixie tubes are of course no longer used, but an authentic clock like this with real Nixie tubes is a cool collectible that has a ton of settings you can adjust with the remote. If you don't care about the collectible aspect of having authentic Nixie tubes and just want a similar aesthetic, there's also LED ones that are much cheaper. However, I did notice there's a bit more glare with these and the numbers aren't quite as easy to see. Next is this solar magnetic levitation device. It levitates using magnets just like the other cool gift I showed last year, but the key difference with this one is obviously the solar panel which allows the device to spin on its own when you put a strong light source on it. Placing it in the sun and you can see it accelerates quite quickly and spins very fast. Next is this Two Truths and Trash Science Trivia deck. On each card in this deck, there's three pieces of science trivia, but one of them is a misconception, and it's your job to spot which one that is. Not gonna lie, this is a shameless self-plug since this is my product that I made based on my other show called Two Truths and Trash, where you need to spot the fake science demo out of the three that I perform in each round, and if you haven't seen that already, you should definitely check it out. Anyway, I'm gonna move on to the next gift, but I also should mention that you can find links to all the products in this video and many more I've found over the past few years on my website, coolsciencefinds.com, if you just wanna browse. Next, this is a really cool structure that allows you to levitate small magnets. There's a strong magnet at the top, which has a threaded rod attached to it. The interior of this structure, as you can see here, is filled with bismuth, which is a material with a really strong diamagnetic force relative to others. As I've shown before, graphite is also very diamagnetic, which allows this pencil lead to overcome the force of gravity and levitate above strong magnets. However, this only works because the pencil lead is so small and light. To lift much heavier objects like these small magnets that come with this structure, you can't just put bismuth underneath. The diamagnetic force isn't strong enough alone. However, that's where the threaded magnet comes into play. By screwing it in and lowering it to just the right spot, the top magnet can provide just enough upward magnetic force to roughly cancel out the force due to gravity pulling it down, 
which allows the diamagnetism to have the predominant impact. Screwing the magnet down too close and the object gets pulled to the top. However, at just the right distance, you can get these objects to levitate quite well, and it's so cool to see and mess around with. Next, this is a square wave, which is a bunch of colored metal wires linked together in such a way that you can spin it back and forth, and it makes a beautiful display. It sort of reminds me of the helicone I've shown before, where there's a bit of a learning curve, and you need to go back and forth to get the best results. It also came with a hook and string to hang it from your ceiling, and although this looks pretty cool too, I thought it was easiest to spin by holding both ends. By doing this and even rotating it about, there's a bunch of different orientations that create satisfying visuals. Next is the string wine bottle holder. This one is similar to the chain one I've shown before, and it's cool because it looks like the string wouldn't be rigid, when of course it is, and it also looks like it shouldn't balance, but it does. There's also another one, which is a simple wood piece like this that also looks cool. However, I thought this one was way too unstable to consider using, and it straight up didn't work for the other shaped bottle that I had. This next one is a play on a canary in a coal mine and mounts to your wall. Once you do that, you'll know it's active because it will drop down and then return back to the upright position. Coal miners used to bring canary birds into their mines to detect potentially dangerous levels of carbon monoxide so they can get out. In a similar way, except now with carbon dioxide, this bird detects if you need to open up the windows to get some fresh air. So here I combined some baking soda and vinegar, which produces carbon dioxide, and this caused the bird to fall down. The bird checks every 10 minutes, and it will fall down if the parts per million of carbon dioxide in the room rises to above 1,000. Then you open up the windows, and the birdie will rise back to the upright position. Next up, this is a fake perpetual motion device that can be used to trick your friends. A discrete button actually turns on the device and the balls are powered by an electromagnet that accelerates the ball back to the top. This is similar to the other perpetual motion device I've shown, except that one's probably more believable than this one given how slow the balls fall down relative to how fast they go back up. You can better see what I mean here in slow motion. Next up, here's a few cool displays of balance that use weights to manipulate the center of gravity of each. The first one is the least impressive in my opinion and just rocks back and forth. The second one is perhaps the most useful of the three since you can clip and display whatever reminder or note you want and this whole thing is surprisingly stable. Last is my personal favorite which is a parent swinging a kid around in a circle and they're doing so on one leg. It's really cool to watch that leg twist at even pretty high speeds, however you of course can't spin it too violently or it will still fall. Next is this gravity defying spinning display. It of course doesn't actually defy gravity, the shiny ball is attached physically to the structure but the ball bearing at the base allows you to spin it and it creates the illusion of a ball suspended in the air. Next up, this is a set of a bunch of metal wire puzzles. Each one has two pieces of metal that are linked together and it's your job to separate them. These range from somewhat easy to solve like this one to much harder where it seems like there's no way to separate them. However, with some careful maneuvering, it easily comes off. It's extremely rewarding to solve these and depending on your personality, they can provide many hours of entertainment or many hours of frustration. There are solutions on the back if you want them, but even these aren't that easy to read and understand. Here's a simple puzzle called the 10 penny puzzle. As the name suggests, the goal is to fit 10 pennies into the square. I obviously won't spoil the answer here, but the solution isn't immediately obvious, and there's a few other options for puzzles like this if you want more than one. Next, this uniquely shaped piece of metal is called a flippo flip. Rather than spinning these though, they're meant to flip and roll over like this. It came with two and they're definitely fun to play with, however, I'd be lying if I said I was able to do this immediately, there's a bit of a learning curve. It's not too bad and I don't think this surface was ideal, but after about five minutes, I definitely got the hang of it. Next, these are fridge magnets with various scientific words. Place them on the fridge and then it's time for you to be creative and make whatever phrases or sentences you'd like. Another way to level up your room is with a poster like this, which is an image taken from the James Webb Space Telescope. Or you can choose from many other scientific posters that are also cool. Next is a liquid timer like this. You flip it over and watch as the colored liquid trickles down. The top nozzle creates drops that roll down the spiral slide, they fall off at various drops along the way, and then they land in the reservoir at the bottom. There's also other varieties like this more simple one with two different colors, and they technically do function as timers, but they aren't that practical since they don't actually alert you when the timer runs out. This is a pop pop mini steamboat. Start by filling up the pipes with water to the very brim and place the boat in the water carefully, making sure the water doesn't spill out of the pipes. Next, light the candle that comes with it and place it on the boat. Steve Mould made a great video showing and explaining why this works, so check that out to learn exactly how it works. But this is a classic example of using heat to produce steam, which expands to produce motion. It's pretty fun to play with, it goes for quite a long time, and can be started and stopped by blowing out and relighting the candle. 
If you're looking for something more educational, last year I tested out a whole bunch of STEM build boxes and science kits to figure out which one was the best. I'll put a link to that video in the description as well. That concludes this year's video, but check out last year's for 38 more cool options, or the year prior for an additional 24. Or as I already mentioned, you can browse through all options on my website, coolsciencefinds.com. In addition, let me know in the comments which ones were your favorites so I know what types to look for this upcoming year. If you want to get notified of my latest finds as soon as possible, you can sign up for my simple monthly newsletter. And when I say simple, I really mean simple. It just lists the cool products I find each month. Thanks for watching to the end and I'll see you next time.